And Dennis, you yeah. spend a lot of time there as well. And, and uh, when you hear that they may be going after dark skinned individuals because they don't want Haitians. Did you cross your arms on country? Did you cross your arms on that purpose? Cross- or was that mm-hmm. was that? <laughs> I told him before we started. Well, how you gonna have me though? I'm the light skinned brother on this shit. So really y'all don't know this y'all in danger. I'm a threat. I'm a threat with your life, cause you know that it's a bet. It's a bet. You know I ain't letting up my foot is on your neck. Take my word for it. It's a promise in a threat. Oh yeah. Really y'all don't know this y'all in danger. I'm a threat. I'm a threat with your life. Video oh, are, are they? I just I, I I was gonna pull it up and play it, but I if you want you want me to play it, I can play. It. I got it. I got go it ahead, man. I love to hear what y'all can. We'll see what I, don't I, know I what got it. I got it. I, I do have it queued up. Um, I do have it queued yeah, up. Yeah, we're burning the midnight oil tonight. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's an alert. Names. Get this. Dark skinned travelers. That means my ass could be grass. Dark skinned travelers should be careful if they plan on visiting. We'll explain when we return. Grins could seriously mess up your trip to the Dominican Republic if it's all true. The U.S. Embassy there is officially putting out a warning for dark-skinned black travelers. <laughs> According to the embassy, the country's migration agents could mistake black Americans or other people with dark skin tones for Haitian immigrants. And if you leave your passport at the resort, you could even be detained. My next guest here on The Factor Uncensored, Fox 26 photographer Tori wow. Walker and attorney Dennis Sperling. Both of them spend regular time in the Dominican Republic. Glad to have you both here. So, Tori, when you heard this, you and I talked over the weekend and you didn't put much weight into it because you know what the complexion of that country is. So your thoughts on this? Well, uh, most of their dollars come from tourism, you know, people coming in to, to vacation there. So uh, to do anything that would hurt that, I think, would be counterproductive to, you know, the way that they make their money. So I just don't put too much credence into it. And Dennis, you yeah. spend a lot of time there as well. And, and uh, when you hear that they may be going after dark skinned individuals because they don't want Haitians. Did you cross your arms on country? Did you cross your arms on that purpose? Cost- or was that mm-hmm. was that? <laughs> I told him before we started, well, how are you going to have me? Though? I'm the light skinned brother on this shit. Right. So, you know, <laughs> well, Go ahead. you know, Isaiah. <laughs> Usually I come here and uh, I'm able to have fun and talk to you and your audience. But, you know, this is a very serious issue. Um, and as a as a black American, as a foundational black American, I don't want to put myself into the lived experiences of either a Haitian person, a citizen or a Dominican citizen. Now, I lived in the Dominican Republic. Um I've watched the news there. I've interacted with uh, folks from there. I understand that there's a lot of history that goes on between these two countries. Mm -hmm. They fought wars against each other. There's (laughs) sports competition. But on top of that, if you watch the news, there's a lot of bad press about Haitian immigrants. I saw a news report where, and this is several years back, where a young young, uh, Dominican woman had her arms cut off by a, a Haitian man who she rebuffed his advances. There are stories that go around the countryside where, you know, the a- immigrants come there and then get jobs and they end up killing the people in, in the fincas or, the, or the, the Dominican owners of the property. So there's a lot that we don't know. But the main thing is, as a foundational black American, it's not my job as an American. It's not my job to be the police of the rest of the world. We, we tried that. It didn't work. We have issues here in the United States. We're concerned. We got 18 people who died right here in Harris County in the lockup over the last two years. So we have our own issues as black Americans that we need to deal with. And the thing is, I haven't received any outreach from any Haitians. Um, I I don't see them opening up their borders and allowing us to become citizens, dual citizens of their country. Same thing for our African countries. They're not extending these arms to us. And I'm going to tell you this. 
Since the George Floyd incident, what I found is that black Americans, our hearts have gone, have gone a little bit colder because we realize that there is no outlet for us and we're in it on our own. And anything that we achieved in this country, we fought for it. Yeah, there is racism. There's intra-racism in South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. We dealt with that here in the United States. But the thing is, as foundational black Americans, as those black Americans who can trace our roots to Mississippi, Alabama, and these tobacco farms in North Carolina, we stayed and we fought. We didn't run. We didn't try to go to some other, someone else's country uh, illegally. We stayed and we fought and we made this country what it is for us. And now you have folks coming over and doing that. But, but what you benefit here in the United States, that's from the hard work. It's illegal to racially profile someone in the United States. It's illegal for a cop to do that. That's not, that's a luxury of the United States due large in part to the hard work of foundational black mm -hmm. Americans. So that, what has really been your experience there when you have gone there? Because obviously while this is an alert from the U S embassy there, it's been tension going on for quite some time. Yeah. So what has been your experience when you visit the Dominican Republic? When I go there, I mainly hang with people that look like me. So I, I hadn't had any issues whatsoever any of my times there. Is it possible that some of that could go <laughs> on because you're not privy and, privy and you're not from there? Oh, I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've, mm -hmm. I've heard of it and I'm sure it does. They're, they're, you know, they're pretty harsh against, you know, Haitians in that country is, you know, that's just. Would I you mean. guys advise any Americans to continue to go there? Or would okay. you say, right, let's just take a pause and see what happens? I'm, I'm not changing my plans. Yeah. Here's the thing. Just like I know you're a black American, or I can look at you and tell, I can look at my Nigerian brothers and Ghanaian brothers and Haitian. I can look at you and tell that you from around here. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm they saying? They can so tell by the way you walk. They, they can, can tell. tell. They got a different mm -hmm. language, a different culture. Mm -hmm. They have different ways in which they communicate. Different. They know each other. That is not our fight. That is something that exists between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And those governments need to work that out. Americans, I've never had any issues. But would you recommend someone going there if that's not our... Because mm. we could be caught in the middle of it. Okay. So, yo, yo, got to stop that real quick. So, did you get the feeling that this was just a clear fear mongering like they were just trying to stoke some fires that weren't actually burning mm -hmm. what do you oh you what do you guys think what do y'all think you know i have a random conspiracy theory man i don't underestimate anybody with all this talk about passport bros you know i wouldn't be surprised if it's a <laughs> somebody that found a then use their access to just do a, a, a straight up international, I ain't gonna say that word, but blockade. You know, uh, the, the, the C blockade. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, it's possible. Uh, man. Anything is possible. I don't know. You know. So are you saying this is a political I was in the timing of it, too. The timing of it seems real, you know. Hey. You know, we got, we got smart not, brothers on here. We got smart brothers on here, boy. We you like, mm. like mm. some. Oh, why, now? why now? Why now? Like, <laughs> what, what, old, what old girl say? Portuguese. Portuguese. you might not be smart. Right. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh -oh. Go ahead, brother Garvey. Now, you might not be far off on that, because just on the whim a few days ago, I Googled passports to see what came up in news articles. And supposedly there's some type of possible delay uh, as of a couple of weeks ago because of processing issues. Mm. And I, mm. I, I just wanted to see. And they never, the, the story didn't specify what the processing issues were. But it just said it could be a possible, that was like the title of the article, possible delay of passports because of processing issues. Mm -hmm. And I saw, hmm. Keep your now, how often does this happen? And I went, plantation, I went a couple of pages, you know, the search pages to see if I could mm -hmm. find another article like that. And yeah. that, it was the only one I could find. So I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Good, Mr. Funny. Allen. Oh. If you if you look at some of the people who are expats that relocated to different parts of different parts of Africa, 
um, they weren't allowed their 401ks. Mm-hmm. They couldn't spend mm-hmm. their money. So the, right. you have organizations that literally try to trap you here. You like they like you born here, you're gonna die here and spend your money here before you like before you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that far of a stretch to assume that, you know, with all this uh black male travel thing going on, that maybe they're trying to scare y'all back into the plantation. Me you personally, know, we I'm got gonna paranoia go. built into us. Because we, we yeah. already know we got that paranoia button just mm-hmm. built into the fact that we've been here and everything we know. Good, go ahead, Rich. You know, I, I you know, I, I share I share Brother Shock's one one two sentiments too, bro. It's not I thought about it and I'm in a lot of these groups, right? Mm-hmm. And I see every day one or two, three brothers. They got mine, I got mine, I got mine. Hey, I expedited mine. Hey, I got mine, I got mine too. And I'm pretty sure if you pull the stats, I'm pretty sure you will see a spike in people, right, getting these passports. Mm -hmm. And when the propaganda doesn't work, but the data comes out and, and, and whoever sits in the high castle that may look like our counterparts and, 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 uh, that message gets back out, whether it's through the sororities, right? We saw what the other sorority system was doing with the insurance. Information gets out real mm-hmm. quick amongst them. I wouldn't be surprised if um, there, ah, are stri- ah, there are, <laughs> there are string, there are, there's a hand, kind of like how that Godfather yeah, couple looked, there's a hand behind the scenes and they saying, hey, we need to put some kind of stop to this. This is not, and, and, and check this out. And just remember I said it here first. What I think could possibly happen is when this doesn't work, when when the plane tickets keep going out to the DR, then I uh, think they may come out and say, "Well, it's an issue of national security." So, so that may postpone uh, the passports getting passed out a little bit more. So, I I would agree with Brother 